Yeah. Um, so uh, this is a, a moment for you, I suppose, to say not quite told you so, but finally they've come around to your way of thinking on this. I welcome this U-turn from the government. I first wrote to the Prime Minister more than three months ago on this issue, uh, and I'm really pleased that uh, he's followed the uh, expert evidence from the WHO, from the British Medical Association, from the Royal Society, but also what we've seen around the world from Germany, Austria, Spain, Portugal, the Far East, Canada, but also nearer to home, Scotland. If I wear a face mask, it keeps you safe. If you wear one, it keeps me safe. And this, along with some other measures, will help us finally get a grip with this virus. What would you say to people, and some of them are calling me today, um, who are just uncomfortable with the compulsory nature of this, being ordered to do so? Well, I'd say respectfully to those people is, look, those same, those same sorts of points were made when seat belts first became compulsory when you were a driver or a passenger in cars in the back seat the same sorts of arguments were made when people were told they'd told they'd be breathalyzed for drinking and driving the same arguments were made when i was an mp when we were discussing and voting on banning people vote uh, smoking in public spaces like uh, restaurants i appreciate yes it is an infringement on people's civil liberties but but can i just say the interesting examples they're all permanent changes you don't expect this to be do you no, but I do think, uh, Sheila, you raise a really good point. These won't be permanent, but I think for the foreseeable future, uh, we'll have to wear face coverings in confined spaces where we can't keep our social distance. For the obvious reason, Sheila, there's no vaccine. Yeah. And so if you see images, you may have friends, uh, you may have been to the Far East, because they've got experience of the SARS virus and previous coronaviruses, you'll see they, as a matter of routine, wear a face covering or a face mask. And so what I think will happen in the short term is it'll become part and parcel of life uh, on the tube or the bus or a tram, wear a face mask. And when you go into a shop, wear one or when you're having a haircut, it probably won't be permanent because I'm hopeful and confident we'll find a cure to this awful uh, virus. So why do you think the government is doing this now? And not months ago. Matt Hancock has just said they want to give people the confidence to shop. I, I think this is an example. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to say in these crude terms of just dither and delay. This is another example where the government's been off the pace. Uh, we've been an outlier on so many things, Sheila. I've been speaking to you and colleagues for months now, whether it's delaying to go to the lockdown, whether it's not, uh, whether it's stopping testing too early, whether it's not getting the personal protective equipment sorted, whether it's having the wrong policy around care homes, whether it's not having a proper test, trace, isolate system, whether it's not making it compulsory on public transport soon enough. This is yet another example of uh, them being too slow and responding and reacting rather than being ahead of the curve. And, you know, uh, I think it's a shame, but I welcome the fact we've got here. But it begs the question, Sheila, why delay until the 24th of July? Why not say compulsory from today?